Okay, now that we uh, generally learned the dinam of kashring, let's go through the kitchen, practical sense, what do you need to do to get the kitchen ready for Pesach? We'll start from the easier things and go to the harder things. Okay, your kitchen table and chairs obviously have to be cleaned because there is hummus around there the whole year. Uh, most tables, practically speaking, you can't cash with your pouring hot, pour, pour boiling hot water all over it. So the custom is the table should be covered. <clears throat> but now with a covering like aluminum foil, you second you put down something it tears, you should like vinyl. So after you clean the table, you make sure that Pesach, the table is covered with a special covering. Then you can have your dairy covering, your mil- uh, m- uh, meat covering, whatever. But the table should always be covered because who knows what type of crumbs may still be there. Your countertops, so some countertops are kosherable for Pesach, some aren't. Okay? So we're talking now basic halacha, going to the right a little bit, but not fanatic, okay? Uh, most pots can hold, for mica cannot be kashered for Pesach. Plastic is not kashered for Pesach. What you could kashered for Pesach is if you have marble or granite, but even marble or granite, you have different types. You can have a slab of marble or granite, which is one piece of marble or granite, that's kosherable. If it's a composition of marble, meaning it's ground up marble made with cement, so then it's not kosherable because the cement is earthenware, and earthenware you can't kosher for Pesach, we learned, or year round either. So if you have, let's say, a marble countertop, granite countertop, so you clean it out thoroughly well. You don't use it for hot for 24 hours. And then you pour boiling hot water all over the countertop. Yeah, you can get your floor wet, but so what? Tiles, what? With, tiles with grout? Huh? Tiles with grout? Now, tiles that have grout, because of the grout, you cannot cash at that counter. So you need to cover it. So you need to cover it. Now, again, if you're, not, if you're not planning to cash it because you can't or whatever, all you have to do is cash it. I mean, uh, c- cover it. But again, you can't cover the aluminum foil that you put down something that's going to rip it. You have to put down something that's going to hold. They have hard aluminum. Now they have hard aluminum. Now they make special made boards. I mean, today you can get whatever you want. Okay? People that live in a house that are not renting, so they buy. One time they get these custom made boards that they put on the counter and they cover it and they keep it from year to year and so on. Now, some people are machmer. One second. Some people are machmer that when you pour boiling hot water all over the countertops, they also do the hot rock, like we mentioned the other Thursday night, why that works. Halachically, you don't have to do it. People that are machma on Pesach, many people do do it on Pesach. If you're not planning to use the countertop, or you don't want to kosher it, you don't want to bother to kashering it, even if it's a kosherable material, you just line it with something that's going to hold, and it's not a problem. And then if you want to put something hot down, make sure there's a towel or something, you know, just don't definitely don't put it down directly on the countertop. What about the walls of the, when it, when it reaches the wall? The wall. The, the wall in the back, again, I, I, ideally, if it's a cashable material, you should pour boiling hot water over it. If it's a non cashable material, it should be covered. And the reason why it needs to be covered, because during the year, hot chametz touched it. And during Pesach, again, something hot is going to touch it. So therefore, ideally, it should be lined in the back. But the back already, you can use more easier things like aluminum foil or something else because you're not putting things down and up and down that is going to rip it. Now, that's the counter. Now, if you have a pantry, by the way, that let's say a, a cabinet where you keep your hummus sticker dishes during the year. No food, no hot stuff, just dishes. So what you need to do is, if you want to put your paste of dicker dishes there, take out the hummus sticker dishes, Halachically, just clean it up. There's nothing hot there. Some people like to reline it every year anyway, so they'll reline it for Pesach. Halachically, it's dry, it's not hot, there's no food there. Sometimes you have pantries, sometimes you can have a bag of barley rip or something like that. So then you need to make sure that it's really clean, that there's, you know, check it out, make sure there's no hummus anywhere over there. Next, let's go to the sink. The sink is a big problem, because sink has hot hummus the whole year. Now, what you need to do for a sink is, again, you need to kosher it with hagala, the boiling hot water, or technically you can use a blowtorch and a stainless steel sink. But let's leave that for a second. If you have 
an enamel sink, a porcelain sink, they're not kosherable for Pesach. So what do you need to do? If you have a non-kosherable sink, because really the only kosherable sink would probably be, according to all opinions, metal. Some people say quartz you can kosher, but if you have a stainless steel sink, that could be kosher. But there's, it's, it, there's a few issues involved. If you have a non-kosherable sink, so you need to, they sell them here in the stores already, kosher markets have them, basins, the grubber made basins, but they have holes. They're actually sink inserts. Based on the size of your sink, you can put a hole, it goes off at the size also, it covers the sink. You have to make sure that all the sink is spotlessly clean. If you have a sink that's stainless steel and you want to kosher it with argola, or technically you can kosher it libun kal with a blowtorch. But I'll tell you the problem with that. I know guys that do it, and they because it's a very thin coating of stainless. No, they don't melt, they make holes in it. <laughs> the warp? <laughs> not warped. They can't so much warped. Not, not with Libun Kao. Libun Kao, you have to get it hot. If you touch it, you're going to burn yourself, or a straw is going to turn brown. But a lot of times, guys do it. So it's just like a, it's a double header because it's a catch 22. Well, from one side, if you do it too much, you're going to ruin it. So therefore, you might not do it well enough. Or if you do it well enough, then you might break it. So, or ruin it. So a lot of people would do, rather do the Hagala process of pour boiling hot water all over the sink. Again, in our circles, if we're kashering it, we would use the hot rock also. Now, the problem with the sink is like this. First of all, you have to make sure the sink is spotlessly clean. You also have to make sure, like we learned Hagala, you can't use it for 24 hours prior to the time you're going to be kashering it, Right? How do you make sure a sink is not used? And I always tell when I teach the women, they're like this. There's something called men in the kitchen that make problems. There's kids in the kitchen that make problems. And there's the housekeepers in the kitchen that make problems. Because, you know, men don't think, as we all know. So what's the problem? Number one, if you want to cash the sink, you have to make sure it's not used for hot for 24 hours. Because anything we learned that you want to cash with Hagala, the hot purging process, hot water, you can't use it for 24 hours prior to the time. How do you make sure a sink is not used for 24 hours? So there's two things you have to do. Number one, underneath the sink, turn off the hot water. But under the sink, turn off the hot water. Then at least nobody will turn on the hot water uh, to make a problem. Secondly, what you need to do, because people, again, they'll have a hot coffee and they'll throw down the sink, or a hot soup, they'll throw it down the sink. So what you need to do, if you want to cash the sink, you take something and you cover your sink. Just as a reminder, they shouldn't use it. And then you close, turn off the hot, this, this is practical. Turn off the hot water under the sink, and then you cover it. The people shouldn't put things into the sink 24 hours prior to the time you want to cash it. A big problem today, send regards. A big problem today. <laughs> A big problem today, by the way, is the faucets of the sink. <laughs> mm. <coughs> Ravi, if you want to figure out your phone, ask your little grandchildren that are two, three years old. They'll do it for you. One second, one second. What? I don't want to sound like I am against the Torah. Why we are fighting in the Hummets? And the homemade is the whole year is very very important for us. And in seven days, eight the, days, Hametz, eight, eight. Eight. Huh? eight, eight. Why double eight? Why 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 we are against the homets? I uh, uh, it's not against the Torah, but the Torah said you will Hametz loy why, why is the why Torah so? Why is the Torah so strict about chametz and not about? Uh, we don't do bedikas chazer, we don't do bedikas shreif, we don't do bedikas everything. We do bedikas chametz. Why is the Torah so strict about bal yiron bal The rabbi put the question better than me. Thank you. So why? So what's the answer? I don't know. So I'll tell you why. Okay. So the Rishonim right because chametz is used to a whole year. Tray, pig, you don't need a whole year. So you're separated from it automatically a whole year. Chametz, you're eating a whole year. Correct? So people forget. You're going to have chametz in the house. You're going to forget. You know, you're not 
you, you're used to eating it all year. So because a person, like Badal Mine, is not separated from Chomets the whole year, so therefore, the chum, why is the Torah so strict about Chomets? It's not for now. Come to Chassidus in the morning. We're learning all about that now in the Maimonim. Chomets represents Gava. Sa'ar Shabisa, the eight Sahara is called Chomets. Uh, the Gemara speaks about people sinning. Kaidim Shehichmitz, Acha Shehichmitz, before you became Chomets, after you became Chomets. Chomets is ego, hoarding is Gava, and that's the source of all evil. So Pesach, which is Yitzhak Mitzrayim, but you have to come to Chassidus, quarter to seven in the morning, you learn. Okay, next. Now, if you want, so uh, what's the problem with the faucets today? First of all, they're much more complicated than they used to be. Now they have things pull out and this type of faucet, that type of faucet. Another bigger problem, by the way, is a lot of faucets today look me- like metal, but they're really plastic. A lot of the things, the faucets today, even the expensive ones, are not necessarily metal. They could be plastic. And plastic, you don't cash it for Pesach. So if you have a plain stainless steel, simple faucet like years ago, so you, again, you clean it out well, and then you leave it for 24 hours with the rest of the sink, and then you pour boiling hot water all over it. What's an interesting thing, if you ever noticed, if this is the faucet, where the water comes out from, spout. the spout where the water, the mom is the bottom though, screws on, it's actually like a little strainer. It is a strainer. And when you open it up, you'll see there is stuff in there. Okay. Now, the problem with that is, those things might be chametz. Because chametz spritzes up. You ever, you know, when you cook in the kitchen, you have hot water, things go up and down in it. Okay. And those strainers are not kosherable. So what people do is either they change them once a year, get a new one. Or what some people do is they just take it off for Pesach. And it's, it's not there for Pesach on the sink. But if you have a, a faucet that's not metal, that's actually plastic, and a lot of them are, you can tap it, sometimes you can figure, see right away if it's plastic or not, that you can cash it for Pesach. We have placed past plastic, the meaning is not to cash it for Pesach. Even our pins that say you could, but we don't cash it plastic for Pesach. So therefore, um, some people actually cover it. If you take off the strainer you're talking about, you can have it in your house or you throw it away? No, you put it away with the chametz. If you get a new one, you throw it out and get a new one. If you're not, you put it away with the chametz. Like everything else in the chametz. What about the little faucets for <clears throat> drinking water? Like the little... You mean the five-gallon bottles? The, filter, the, filter, the filters with the little faucets for the water. That's, the filters are a problem. The filters have to be changed. Especially if it's a hot water for filter. Some people have instant hot water and by the sinks. So number one, just for the record, Shabbos for sure you can't use it. The instant hot water heaters, that there's no tank, it just instantly becomes hot. You can't use it on Yom Tif either. Yom Tif, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about Pesach. Yom Tif, you're not allowed to use it. Thirdly, the problem is, hot chametz is by the sink. Hot chametz spritzes and squirts all over the place. So that thing can be, it's very complicated to kosher. There's some plastic on it. It, 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 it. Bottom line, it's very difficult to clean out. So what people do, they actually co- cover it with aluminum foil or whatever, and they don't use it for the duration of Pesach. It is a big problem to kosher there. The cold filtered water? Huh? The little thing, the cold filtered water? The cold filtered water is not a problem, basically. It's all cold. We're going to get there when we get, we're not there yet. Anyway, so bottom line is, if it's not, if it's metal, you can cash it boiling hot water. If it's not, then you really should uh, cover it. 